Welcome to Senior High School Math Series. Let us have functions. And this is part one of two parts under General Mathematics, quarter one, week one. This is compliant on the curriculum implementation and learning management matrix for K-12's most essential learning competencies. Here are our lesson objectives. Identify relations and functions and determine whether a relation is a function. Before we continue, let us ponder on this. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. A translation from a Chinese proverb. Okay, let's proceed to the definitions. Let us have relation. A rule that relates values from two different sets, usually written as a set of ordered pairs, x, y, where x is an element of the first set called the domain and y is an element of the second set called the range. Next, we have function. A relation where each element in the domain is related to only one element in the range following certain rules. For functions, it is denoted by f of x equals y, read as f of x equals y, which means that a function is a set of ordered pairs x, y, such that no two ordered pairs have the same value of x but different values of y. Hence, when we are given an ordered pair 3, negative 1, which is associated to a certain function f, then we say that f of 3 equals negative 1. Let us go to examples. Identify whether each of the following is a function or a mere relation. So that means all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. Let us have number 1. Set f with elements. The ordered pairs 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and so on. Notice or observe the first element. None of the first element is repeated. Therefore, this is a function. Let's go to number 2. G is the set of ordered pairs 3, 7, 4, 11, 5, 15, 6, 19. Again, observe the first element, so none is repeated, therefore it follows the definition of a function. Next, number 3, set A with elements ordered pairs 0, 3, 1, 6, 2, 9, 0, 12. So, this is a relation, however, observe the first element on the first ordered pair and the fourth ordered pair. They are both zero. So that means this is a relation but not a function. Therefore, this is mere relation. Number four, set D is the set of ordered pairs from negative infinity, negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 6, 2, 4, until positive infinity. So by the pattern None of the first element would be repeated, therefore this is a function. Next, number 5, set R is the set of ordered pairs, negative 1, 4, 2, 5, negative 1, 7, 3, 6. So, we see right away that on the first and third ordered pair, negative 1 is repeated. Then this is not a function, but a mere relation. Okay, let's proceed. A relation may be presented as mapping diagram. It is used to represent the relationship between two sets. A mapping diagram represents a function if each element in the input values is paired with only one element in the output values. 
So when a relation is written as a mapping diagram, we can also identify whether it is a function. We look at each element in the input values. If it is paired with only one element in the output values, then the relation is a function. The mapping diagram of a relation also shows the type of relation that exists between the two sets. So there are different types of relation. Let us see. A one-to-one -one relation exists when each of the elements in the first set is paired with only one element in the second set. Let us have an example. We have the first set as the domain with elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then the range with elements 4, 8, 12, and 16. Let us look at the one-to-one -one mapping diagram for this relation. 1 is mapped to 4, 2 is mapped to 8, and 3 is mapped to 12, and 4 is mapped to 16. So... Since each element in the first set is mapped or paired with only one element in the second set, then this is one-to-one -one relation. And written as a set, we have 1, 4, 2, 8, 3, 12, 4, 16. So none of the first element is repeated in the ordered pair, so this relation is a function. Again, one-to-one -one relation is a function. Next, we have one-to-many relation. This exists when an element in the first set is paired with two or more elements in the second set. So let us have an example. Domain, we have shoes and umbrella as its elements. Range with red, green, yellow, and blue as the elements. So let us see the one-to-many relation or mapping. Shoes is mapped to red. Shoes is mapped to green. Also, umbrella is paired to yellow and umbrella is paired with blue. See that the elements in the domain are paired with more than one elements in the range. Written as a set, this would be shoes red, shoes green, umbrella yellow, umbrella blue. So as a set, we see right away that the x-coordinate of the ordered pair is repeated. Then this is not a function. So a one-to-many relation is not a function. Next, many-to-one relation. This exists. When two or more elements in the domain is paired with only one element in the range. We have the domain with elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also the range with elements A, B, and C. Let us see many to one relation. 1 is paired with A. 2 is paired with B. 3 is paired with C. Also 4 is paired with C. So there are two elements in the domain paired with only one element in the range. Then we call this many-to-one relation. Written as a set, this would have 1A, 2B, 3C, 4C as its element. Notice that a y-coordinate is repeated, that is C. However, by the definition of the function, this many-to-one relation is a function because none of the x-coordinate is repeated. Again, many-to-one relation is a function. Let's continue. Many-to-many -many relation exists when two or more elements in the first set are paired with two or more elements in the second set. Let us have the illustration. Domain, elements 1, 2, and 3, Range with elements A, B, C, and D. Let us see the pairing. 1 paired with A, 2 paired with B, and 3 paired with C. Also, 3 is paired with D, and 2 is paired with A. As I said, we have 1A, 2A, 2B, 3C, and 3D. 
So some elements in the ordered pair are repeated. The x coordinate 2 repeated. The y coordinate A repeated. Therefore, this is a many to many relation. And since a first element is repeated or an x coordinate is repeated, this is not a function. Okay, let's have the vertical line test. A visual way to determine whether the graph represents a relation is a function. By theorem, if there exists a vertical line which intersects a graph in more than one point, then the graph does not represent a function. Let us go to examples. Use the vertical line test to determine whether each of the following graphs represent a function. Example number one, we have a graph of a line. So let us use the vertical line test. Now we see that the vertical line intersect the graph of the line at one point. And wherever we put that vertical line, it will only intersect the graph at a single point. Therefore, this is a function. Next, example number two, the graph of a parabola, a quadratic relation. So let us use the vertical line test. So we see wherever we put the vertical line, it will intersect the graph at a single point. So the parabola or the quadratic relation is a function. Next, number three, a circle. Let us draw the vertical line. So there are many instances that when we draw the vertical line, there will be two points of intersection. So the graph of a circle is not a function, or a circle is not a function. Next, number four, a parabola that opens to the left. This is also represented by quadratic relation, but we see that when a vertical line is drawn, it may intersect in many instances at two points, the graph. So, when the parabola opens to the left, it is not a function. Next, cubic relation. So, we draw the vertical line. Then, it intersects the graph at a single point. Therefore, a cubic relation is a function. Okay, let us go to the next, an equation. A statement that asserts the equality of two mathematical expressions. So this is uh, shown by the relationships between two values using an equal sign. An equation is a function if and only if for every value of x, there is only one corresponding value for y. Let us go to the examples. Determine whether each of the following equation represents a function. Let us go to number 1. We have 3x minus 2y equals 6. So observe that for every real value substituted to x, it will produce exactly one value for y. Therefore, this is a function. For example, if x equals 0, there is only one value for y, that is negative 3. Or if we substitute 2 to x, there will only be one value for y, which is 0, and so on. Next, we have x equals y squared plus 2y. So, try substituting a value for x. If it produces a single value for y, then this is a function. However, there are same values for x that will yield different values for y. Say for example, if x equals 0, we can get y equals 0 or y equals negative 2. So one value for x yields 
two values for y. 0, 0, 0, negative 2. This is not a function. Next, y equals the square root of 2x plus a, a radical function. Because for each value of x, there is exactly one value for y. So, for example, if x equals 4, you can get y equals 4. Next, an equation for a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, where the radius is equal to 2. It is not a function because some values of x yield different values for y. If x equals 1, substitute to the equation, you will get y equals positive square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. Okay, for worksheets on this topic, you may download from the link given on the description of this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more math lessons.